Hello guys, in this video we are going to create the units for our strategy game and make them move around the map when, we, when they receive the command. In the last video we have been building a turn-based strategy game and it contains several tile maps, the map, map script which manages all the tile maps in one place. We also have a Pathfinder script that is going to manage the calculations for any movement not actually moving the unit themselves rather than just finding the best path. We also have a set of resources and how they are produced as productions. And we have technology trees. Currently we have a single tech tree uh, with only a few techs, but it can be expanded easily. You can also see that the tech tree have its own uh, editor script, which we can visualize the whole tech tree in one place. We also have a script under the UI folder for uh, managing the camera controlling at the moment. Originally, I was planning to have parties which contain multiple regiments and regiments were going to contain multiple recruits um, and the recruits being the individual units. Uh, but to simplify things, I decided to match each party with a single regiment, uh, at least for the video. This turns party regiment relationship into a one to one relationship since each party is going to have one regiment. Um, as I have mentioned in the class diagram video, we can actually fuse these two classes so we can have one party class and um, co define all the variables of the regiment under the party class. So let's start with creating the party class. This will inherit from the mono behavior so we can attach it into a game object. And the first thing I will be adding is a static collection where I can keep track of all available parties uh, on the map. Alternative will be using the get components function since they are all uh, one of the behaviors. However, get components is um, computationally expensive. Uh, by just storing them in a um, collection, it will be much easier to access them. We have to make sure that they add themselves uh, during the start of the or each instance and uh, they will remove themselves whenever this instance is destroyed. This container can be a list or a hash set. Uh, both are acceptable, I think, um, but at the moment we'll, I'll go with a hash set. The next thing will be the variable which stores the coordinates of the party. We also want to store the recruits that this party will contain as a list of recruits. That means we have to create a recruit class. This one will only inherit from the mono behavior and let it have a name variable and associated to a recruit type which will have we will have to create as well and each recruit will also contain a remaining hit points and experience as integer variable So the remaining hit points and experience are going to be things that are going to change along the game. Uh, but recruit type is going to contain things that are not going to change. So let's create a recruit type class as well. Now this one is going to be inheriting from scriptable object instead of the mono behavior. It can contain a sprite, a maximum hit points, a base movement points, wage and a list of required resources. Now these variables are going to be specific to particular recruit types.
I will also have the recruitment class. This class is going to describe how a recruit will be produced. So it will contain um, a list of input resources, um, an input recruit type, uh, if it is like an upgrade, and an uh, output recruit type. I do not have to refer to this class uh, in others, uh, not at least at least not at the moment. So I didn't really need to create this class uh, for the video, but it's best to create it uh, together. According to our plan, the um, party class should also have reference to the whichever nation or faction that um, this party belongs to. So we're going to create a separate um, faction class so that uh, we can manage players that is going to be taking part in the game. So this faction class could be a mono behavior. So we're going to just um, pull it in and uh, drop into the scene as a component. And at the moment, it doesn't have to contain anything, just as long as there are different names for faction classes, that's enough. Let's rename this as party. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create um, a game object that's going to contain all the factions. Every time we start the scene, we can recreate um, uh, or we can activate or deactivate these factions. I'm going to assign these uh, game objects with recruit components. I'm going to create a couple of recruit types and recruitment. However, to create them uh, from the editor, I'll need to have a asset menu. So I'm going to create asset menu for each scriptable object. So I can create them from the uh, project window. Now, when I right click on the project window, I can have the under RVT folder. I can create a recruit type or recruitment. Here's a couple of them. So we have a cannon, we have a knight, we have a conquistador. Just, I hope I spell it right now let's assign the scriptable objects i haven't set them up or anything but uh, i can set the, the properties later anyway I'm going to create a recruitment. Not that I need it at the moment. It's just for when you're when we're creating a unit. But 
still does have one. We know we're not going to be using it at all for now. Now, the next thing we need to do is um, going to create a script that is going to manage the, the moving commands. So I'm going to create it on the tester. So we already have a couple the test scripts I've been working here. Now we can remove them so uh, it won't be confusing. I'm going to create a new tester script. So this is about moving um, parties. So I'm going to create a folder here, call it test. So I'm going to create a script here and let's call it move on or move party. So I'm going to give it to tester, activate it. And so what it's going to do, it's going to contain, first of all, to move an army, first we need to select it. So let's define the selected party. So we have to define this as well. So I'm going to public um, party selected party. That's the first thing. Next, let's remember how we were finding this path on the map. Now, our pathfinder uses the generate path function. And the output is stored in the path list. Once we generate the path, we can save it inside the um, move party instance. However, it probably makes more sense since we are, each party is going to have their own path that uh, each party stores its own path um, with itself. Inside in each update, I'm going to check if the party is selected or not. And that's pretty much pretty easy. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check if the mouse is pressed, if input um, hit mouse button down. Let's be doing the left mouse button. So if the left mouse button is down, this is the button that selects the party. So we're going to iterate to all the parties and if any of them is overlapping with the mouse position. But the mouse position is in screen space, not in tile map. So we need to convert the um, mouse position into the, uh, the work position and then from work position to the tile position, which we can also call the self. So input. Mouse position. This is a mouse position. We're going to cast it to camera main. Uh, we're going to take from the screen space world point. And that should correspond to a tree, a world point. And then that world point should correspond to a, 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 a cell. So we have get cell. Uh, maybe I, we didn't create anything, um, do we? World to sell or anything? No, we didn't create it. Let's go to map and create that. So at the map we have uh, get map rectangle, crop empty fill gaps. Uh, this is all for creating at the beginning. Um, the movement cost get movement costs for pathfinding. We have covered this before, and get management. So nothing about um, checking if, you know, which file the work position corresponds. So we're going to do it here. So we're going to public, it's going to return vector to int. This is the cell position. So it's going to be world to self. I'm going to take a world position, vector to be world position. And we're going to convert the web position to cell position, which is easy. We can, we can use a topology since the topology map is always, you know, it's the base. And all of them have it. Topology map, world to cell position. So we already have that. You know, we could, why don't we just use direct topology? Because we want to keep things as isolated as possible. Everything you know, that communicates with the map is going to go through the map script, not the topology. So the topology map, all, all those maps are not going to be directly communicating with the rest of the program. So we're going to do the top, topology map to get the world position. 
and convert to cell position. However, I know that um, this can cause a problem with the z axis. We want to make sure that z axis is going to be zero. So vector three and uh, cell equals cell and and cell dot z is zero as the integer. And then we can return return so let's save this and this will return let's go back so map uh, so it's world to cell so it's going to take from the world position to cell position and uh, this is vector three and this is clicked on cell and could i could have found a better name, but that's okay. Anyway, yeah. So at the moment we find the cell that we clicked on, but we don't know if it has a party. So luckily we already have all parties inside the uh, inside the all parties static variable. So we're gonna do we're gonna iterate through them. So um what for each party in all parties of all parties okay so this didn't work this why it didn't work because we didn't make it public obviously we can make it public and it will work so for each of them we're going to iterate and um, if party dot the we have the location right located location don't we have location so I'll quick look at the party oh yeah party has located cell again not public I should make it public as well located cell so if the located cell is clicked on cell then this is the this is the one we we're talking about so Elected party is uh, this party, and then we can break the whole cycle, uh, whole iteration. Uh, this is public, so we can actually test it. So at the moment, this party doesn't have any position. It's zero, 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 zero. Uh, I could, we could see using the, one of the old scripts, the test scripts we have created. Uh, which which uh, tile is which one? So I'll say draw tile position script. Boy, why is that? Oh, okay, I need to choose the grid map. Um, and topology map. Okay, there you go. So this is at one fifteen zero. So we can keep this here. We can stay here. Uh, 115 zero and uh, that means that I can set my part to 115 zero yeah all right so let's these and we can we should be able to see that this party is going to change once we click on this uh, we have an error oh this is this is because the all parties has not been initiated yet. So we're going to have to do new asset party. Empty party at the beginning. Let's start again. Okay, so let's go to, uh, yeah. So I'm going to click on this and she should oh, change. There you go. It automatically did. Now, and what happens if we don't click on it? So I'll click somewhere else. Nothing here happening. And I click on this one. The party is selected. Very good. All right. Uh, next thing we need to do is we need to move it, right? Now that's a bit challenging. But before we do that, I would like to show you how you can um, draw the tile positions on the screen. So the way that this works, 
is it uses the on draw gizmos and uh, inside on draw gizmos i'm using uh, i'm iterating for every cell within the given tile map and i'm using the handles library to draw a label um, at the position the work position of the uh, given cell and writing the cell position itself so vector 3 int is written here and i'm using a specific uh, a style that i'm creating here okay now in the next part we are interested in moving the party so what we are going to do we're going to check input get mouse button down and this time we are we're looking for right mouse button so if there's a right mouse button click and if this selected party is not empty because if it's empty there's nothing to move then we are going to consider drawing a path and um, start the part to move so for that we're going to need to um, use the pathfinder if i recall correctly let's have a look at pathfinder pathfinder is under out the pathfinding so using out the pathfinding we can have our own pathfinder here public it doesn't have to be public pathfinder uh the node type is vector 3 int and we can call it pathfinder and at the beginning we can declare pathfinder And after declaration, we have to make sure that uh, get heuristic distance function is it's going to take two parameters and going to return the distance between the two points. Map dot get minute and distance x and y. So this is a lambda function. I just declared a function right here. Um, pathfinder get neighbor step costs. In this case, I'll just get x and it will use again map main uh, get neighbor and step costs. There you go. Two functions declared right here and head to Pathfinder. Now I'm going to use this pathfinder between the two points where the, the, the part is and where I, whenever I clicked. So I will find the position I clicked again. So this is the new position I clicked. Let's change the name here. Uh, let's call it target self. And what I want to do, I want to find the path. So I'm going to use the pathfinder uh, and generate path. This function takes a start node. Start node is the current selected selected parties located cell, and the end node. End node is the target cell. And I have to give a list, an empty list of path. So list. Vector three int path, and I'm going to feed this to the generate path function as well, and then not only this returns bool if a path if a path is found. So I'm gonna do it if this is actually worked. There is a path, then then I can assign a party uh, sorry select the party path the selected party path is also not public
Now we assign the selected party's path with the path we found. Next, what we want is to make it move along this path. Now I'm going to create a coroutine that will check if the path is uh, empty. And if it's not empty, then it will move towards the um, next target in the path. Okay. So let's go ahead follow. Oh, I can't type it today. Follow the path. So it will just follow the path. Now we can have a time step vote. Let's call it 0 0.2 for now. This, this code is going to check if the path is empty. And if the path is not empty, it's going to move the party towards the first location. If uh, path count is more than zero, so if it's not empty, then we're going to move the party transform. So transform position is vector three move towards. So it's going to move towards from the position towards the target towards from here the most recent target is going to be stored in the first index of the path the path stores vector three ints which are the cell coordinates but we want to convert them into the world position which again we can rely on to the map so we can create a new one called public Vector three uh, cell to cell world. We can do that one. So we're doing the opposite. Uh, cell and topology map uh, cell to world. Now I can just return this. And come back here. So map name cell to world. The next parameter is the ratio defines how much we're going to move from the current position to the next position. So I think about five percent is enough. So the execution of a co this coroutine is going to happen along a certain period of time. So we have to keep checking uh, if we have reached to the, the, the next position. For that, we have to um, encapsulate this part of the code inside a while loop. And it's going to check if we are going to we have achieved the next goal. If we have did that, then we have to remove the that target from our path list and start again for the next target. Since this function is going to be executed in a period of time, we have to um, repeat this check at every certain amount of time. So once we call this, if the path is not empty, it's going to move towards the first position. However, we also have to check something else. If it has reached the position, so um, if transform position is identical with this, then we want to remove the, the first one, path, remove at zero. So I can remove the first, the, 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 the item at the first index. And once we reach that position, we also make the path I'm uh, not oh, sorry. The located cell going to be equal to the path zero. If it is empty, it can't continue. So what we're going to do um, check at this point if path count is zero, then we also break. Do 
this and then break here. We can start the follow path coroutine inside the update, but it requires that we have to check every frame if the path is not empty. The alternative is that we can start the coroutine once the move command is received. Start coroutine, select the party dot uh, follow path. We don't have, we don't seem to have it because probably it's not public anymore. It's public now. Follow path. It will require the variable, the, 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 the argument, but it's already set, so we don't have to worry about it. It should work like this. So it will start the coroutine, and the coroutine should finish once uh, it reached through all, it reached all the positions in the path. Let's give it a try. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, so I have selected a party here and I'll right click and it seems like it's moving. It's a bit too slow, but it is moving. Let's make it a bit faster. We can make the steps. 0 0.5 as well. What we need to do is select a party uh, stop all coroutines. This is necessary so that if we click twice we will have to stop all the previous coroutines and start a new one. Now with this we have a working moving system. In the next video I will focus on making an in-game UI window manager which can contain settings such as tech trees or end turn reports. Till then, good luck with your projects.